Good morning uh, and welcome to Aura's In Conversation um, show where we talk to prominent personalities or subject experts um, and we try to learn from them um, the latest discussions in their field, the latest discourses that are going on, their opinions, their experiences. And um, so, so far in Aura's In Conversation series, we have tried to speak to activists, some academics, some journalists and try to get, try to get a grasp on um, the current events or, or their take on um, a lot of the debates. But today um, I think it's a wonderful experience because um, we've not had, uh, despite being a women's magazine, a magazine, we've not actually had the opportunity to have an interview with a writer, with a, with a filmmaker. And um, that is what we are doing today. Um, so welcome, um, Mohammed Noshad, to the show. And um, Mohammed Noshad is a filmmaker, a documentarian, a writer. And um, today he's with us to discuss the art of writing. Um, and hopefully uh, this will be of help for our young writers. Um, so without... Uh, further ado. Um, so roughly what I would like to talk to you or what I would like to learn from you today um, is of course, you know, um, what kind of writing um, do editors or, um, uh, you know, senior writers or, or are, what are they looking for when they read a piece and what can um, young writers upcoming writers like the ones we have in Aura, like the ones you met in our workshop yesterday. Um, what kind of things uh, should they look out for? How should they cultivate their writing? Um, what should they not do? Uh, so on and so forth. So um, since uh, most of Aura's, uh, you know, uh, writers are quite young, um, they are upcoming writers, they are very, uh, um, you know, new writers, what kind of advice, what advice would you have for young and upcoming writers, particularly those who are like putting out their work in the public sphere for the first time or considering, you know, sending their work to a publication, considering sending their work or uploading their work for the first time, which can be a very nerve wracking experience for a young writer. What kind of advice would you have for them? Uh, see, writing is uh, traditionally considered to be an art. Yeah. But nowadays, the world has increasingly realized in a very media-saturated world that it's also a science. Yeah. So writing is considered nowadays both an art and a science. So which means if it's an art, then it's very subjective. Mm -hmm. So it has its source, its inspiration, mm -hmm. its essence and soul in your soul, somewhere inside you. It's it's uh, an internal thing. So, uh, if it's an internal thing, if it's a spiritual thing, then you cannot dictate terms for that or you cannot tell rules and regulations for that. But at the same time, uh, it's also a science. People have realized it and people are working on those grounds. And you can see most of the universities in the world globally are offering courses in creative writing. Yeah. So, that means that it's a science. Yeah. It can be taught. People can uh, grow and nourish and mature in the art of writing. Mm. But at the same time, inevitably it's an art because uh, if somebody who does not have uh, any taste or orientation towards mm. letters and words, you can't make them writers. Mm. But if someone uh, has uh, an inclination towards the art of letters, if somebody is interested in the magic of words, mm. then uh, there are methods or there are techniques and tips uh, by which they can be trained and they can be equipped with. Right. So, uh, when it comes to uh, young writers or advising or giving suggestions or guidelines to young writers, as you ask it, uh, uh, most of the times what happens is people think of uh, content only. Hmm. So what to write about? So it's it matters. Uh, it 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 really matters to have an original content in your mind, to have a perspective in your mind, and it's very important. 
that's the first thing that's the primary thing but at the same time how to write it and how to present it or how to package it mm. also matters mm. most of the times uh, young writers or new writers fail in this aspect mm. they don't know how to write mm. they write they only think about the content and they easily forget the craft part mm. so the structure how you package it uh, the style of it uh, your diction the tone that you set all these things matter and uh, a professional writer or a professional editor uh, will be very much conscious about all these aspects when he or she reads it yeah. so uh, since you ask it what what are the things to be considered when a, a young writer sends a piece to a publishing house or a magazine or any sort of editorial team uh, then uh, they have to uh, first of all come up with a very fresh idea mm. do not write uh, things that have already been written uh, about in the past uh, there could be subjects uh, in which someone is genuinely interested in for instance um, political islam mm. but at the same time uh, we should know that we should not get stuck in the past mm. uh, the idea of political islam uh, has been debated much and uh, it has reached uh, a point wherein there are a lot of multiple theoretical positions in that. Mm. So most of the times, particularly from uh, particular organizational backgrounds, what happens is because of the social conditioning that they get, mm. before because of the limited exposure they have, they get stuck in the past mm. and they are not able to uh, see beyond what they have been taught or what they have been told mm. and this becomes a serious problem when it comes to writing mm. so a writer should have an open mind a, a writer should do continuous research mm. a, a writer should be uh, open to new ideas and be exposed to what is happening around the world mm. particularly in the subjects that they are interested in mm. so if you are interested if a young writer is, is interested in political islam or islamic politics whatever so it's a beautiful subject it's a very profound subject it's very philosophical and it has multiple theoretical positions to look into and they should know uh, the current discourse that is happening mm. otherwise they'll get stuck in the past which means uh, a learned editor will simply discard what they have written so having a, having you know a perspective a fresh perspective an original thought and getting updated and upgraded in, in, in an intellectual and ideological way, uh, being very creative and uh, uh, having one's own style, these things matter. Interesting. Um, so, uh, one of the interesting things that you said was how writers often um, only think about the content, like the what to say. And I somehow, this resonated with me a lot as a researcher because often, for example, when we are presenting our synopsis we get very caught up in like the you know the leaves of the you know the the very micro details um and we forget how to like research how to structure it but um another interesting like um as, as the sub editor of aura i am responsible for you know receiving a lot of submissions and going through them one of the things that i often hear is that like um i don't write like i can't write or or you know this very um uh, somewhere a very psychological aspect to the to the um, to the process of writing is there, right? Particularly with not just with younger writers, but even with older writers or people who have never considered that they could write. So, um, is is this something that you um, encounter in your workshops as well? That there is a very a mental aspect, a psychological aspect to sort of breaking out of your shell, and not just like starting to write, but also as you said that many writers um, are, are caught up um, or or are merely duplicating and replicating. So to think beyond what you know, to sort of challenge yourself, sort of you know take a risk. Is there a very um, is there a very uh, important psychological aspect to get writing? Yeah, of course. Uh, writing is you know a very terribly lonely process, and uh, a writer uh, needs certain you know psychological resources uh, 
uh, and physical resources as well. For instance, time and space. Yes. There are many writers who can't write when they are sit in a crowd yeah. or when they are surrounded by noise. Yeah. So these things are very personal. There could also be people who can write sitting in a metro. Yeah. I have seen a lot of people doing yeah. this. I mean, maybe they are uh, uh, texting or something, but I also think there are writers uh, who can do that. In uh, airports, in railway stations, even in malls, mm. in the in the midst of a noisy crowd. Uh, so, uh, but when it comes to the majority of writers, particularly young writers, not seasoned writers, uh, they they require a lot of uh, physical and uh, psychological resources or a, or, an, or a conducive environment wherein they can mm -hmm. sit relaxer and think about it and organize their thoughts and find apt words and language and then articulate it in a, uh, in a satisfying and convincing way, first of all for themselves and for the readers or the editors. So uh, this uh, maybe you may also be talking about uh, the writer's block, which is uh, you know a classic thing which has afflicted a lot of writers, even great writers like Dostoevsky. So they have themselves written about it, and uh, there are other uh, fiction writers as well. So masters. So basically, uh, you know, in a way, writing is a very divine. Uh, gift mm. and it's uh, it's a lot intuitive particularly when it comes to fiction writing uh, you are almost like a creator you are dealing with the destiny of your characters and uh, you delve deep into the soul of uh, or the psyche of your characters mm. and uh, you understand uh, why they think in a p particular way and why they do what they do mm. and uh, uh, you try to relate these traits with uh, what is being reflected in the minds of the readers. Mm. So this is a very profound thing and this is a very, uh, for me it's a very spiritual thing. Mm. So understanding humanity, understanding the soul of humanity, getting reconnected, uh, rewiring, mm. Uh, different souls and all those things. So uh, it's in a way very therapeutic. Uh, it's in a way very uh, consoling and reassuring. So uh, when we feel, when somebody feels like I have a lot of things to write and I want to write, but I'm not able to, or I can't write, then. Uh, there are many methods or there are many potential ways to overcome this. For instance, uh, they can try, <clears throat> there is this technique called flow writing. Yeah. So uh, it belongs to, this, this flow writing technique is developed based on the idea of stream of consciousness. So they can sit uh, somewhere, particularly this, the best time to do flow writing is in the morning. So they can sit and because most of the writers after a good night's sleep, they feel fresh and a lot of ideas can come and mm. uh, they can simply sit and keep on writing without pausing or without thinking and without even judging or comparing their own words with anything else and simply uh, letting flow the words that they have been gifted with mm. and it, it just observe what's happening and uh, uh, maybe what they are producing is not good quality content. It could be low quality content, mm -hmm. but it's okay. The thing is that uh, to facilitate the flow. So once you are able to write at least uh, a few hundred words, mm -hmm. then you will be able to find a flow later. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Um. So I, I was going to, I was deliberating on whether to ask this or whether to get into this. So I'm not going to ask you the cliched question about social media and, and writing, how has social media changed reading or writing. But instead what I was thinking about is that um, with the <coughs> proliferation of the internet access, um, you know, access to a lot of social media, um, forms are also changing, right? A lot of people are 
you 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 know in our mutual mutual circles as well a lot of people do a lot of their political writing on facebook statuses long facebook statuses similarly there are other platforms like medium or or things where people can quickly put their thoughts out right um even twitter threads have their own art artistry to them so do these kind of new forms um and networks excite you or or like have you found valuable writing in them um are they valuable tools for young writers or would you like you know give advice a dose of skepticism um no no i i'm not someone who advises uh what i think is um yes of course i have found a lot of very valuable writings on uh, facebook and even instagram and twitter of course um Uh, but at the same time i also think it's very deceptive for a young writer particularly um i have seen a lot of uh young girls and boys mm. getting carried away by the likes they get likes mm. and comments they get on instagram particularly yeah. so uh the so called creativity of your writing uh actually get torpedoed or sabotaged mm. um because you know uh if you need a, a lot of likes on the instagram then you need to be average mm. if you have high quality content if you write really well then a lot of people won't follow you a lot of people won't get what you mean so you have to keep it mediocre mm. so so that it gets circulated so that it it's shared it's it's you know posted as a story mm. so and this is a trap mm. a lot of people fall into this trap mm. uh uh i have seen this happening to a lot of potentially good writers mm. so they don't grow mm. they 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 feel like yeah this is enough i am getting a lot of likes and people are liking what i write mm. and i am getting a lot of good comments a lot of people are sharing it and it's okay mm. and this is a very unfortunate trap yeah. but at the same time i'm not dismissing the possibility of instagram and uh, facebook or any other social media uh particularly for political writings mm. quick political responses from brilliant minds original minds we always go to their facebook facebook wall and yeah. see what they have written what they want to say about this mm. yeah we do that mm. but at the same time uh those brilliant writers that come on facebook particularly they don't consider themselves great writers so there is a difference there are i think there are two kinds of uh, writers nowadays uh, one group of writers who have been created by the social media because of their mediocrity uh, the the banal ordinary stuff they say and you know uh, also the uh the low quality uh, language or phrases or expression or style of articulation they have uh uh by the way i am not talking about the you know i am i am pretty much aware of the um the idea of uh, high culture and mm-hmm. mass yeah. culture so i am not i am not yeah. talking in terms of an elite idea of l- yeah. literary sensibility but even otherwise mm. yeah then one group is this people who have been created by the writers who have been created mm. uh by the instagram or facebook algorithm mm. and the other people is uh, who are writers even without social media mm. so they use social media both mm. both people are there on the social media but this people are not writers if there are if there is no social media yeah and the other one they don't mind even if yeah. they don't get yeah. enough likes yeah. interesting um recently i've been i mean not recently over the past some time i've been um trying to read or reading long form you know narrative um and because as somebody who's pretty pretty interested in non fiction um a lot of um writing in this way interests me uh, one thing i was thinking was that um so often long form um deals with uh, events that might have uh, could be dealing with events that have already happened for instance uh, a a pogrom or or the life you know of somebody who's who's uh, recently passed away or or something like that 
So essentially they are events that the public or the readers sort of know about. They are not new in that sense. You know, it could be 30 years of, uh, of the anti-Sikh riots or it could be something like that or something like that. Uh, but what long form really does is, like good long form really does is, it makes you want to sit and read those 7,000 words um, all over again for the minute details and the way the writer tells it. So um, how as writers uh, or editors, um, do we talk about things that are not necessarily new to the reader? How do we reintroduce them? How do we um, write about them in an interesting way, particularly non-fiction, political events, for instance? Yeah. yeah. Actually, um, nowadays, this is uh, this question is applicable not only to uh, you know long form; it's yeah. also applicable to daily journalism, yeah. news writing, because. Uh, uh, there is, there won't be a very tiny ma minority who takes a newspaper to know the news, yeah, yeah. to know what happened yesterday. Because everybody knows what happened yesterday. The major incidents, at least, we all are informed. Yeah. Because we are all using social media or we are looking into yeah. the TV screen and, uh, you know, it's a media saturated world. Yeah. Everybody knows. So, but when it comes to the long form journalism, yeah. uh, it's not necessarily about what happened yesterday or last week. It could be, as you said, something that has happened three decades before or yeah. even before that, or last year or yeah. a couple of years back. So uh, we give a very profound perspective uh, to our readers and uh, uh, long form is, even though it's non-fiction, yeah. It has everything that a good fiction has. Yeah. It's storytelling. Mm -hmm. It's narrative journalism. Mm -hmm. So basically, you you see characters and their lives. Mm -hmm. You see conflict in that. You see drama in that. So uh, and that of course includes emotions. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are able to relate with them. So when we take any kind of long form, uh, any long form piece, we will definitely meet. Uh, meet people, mm. their lives, mm. their conflicts, their emotions, their grief and excitement, mm. uh, their pain and pleasure. Mm. So uh, that is almost like reading a novel. Mm. So if you are interested in the art of reading, if you are a reader, if you enjoy reading, then long forms are for you. Yeah. So uh, and every long form writer and editor is aware of this. So it's like, you know, uh, we often use a metaphor, it's like cooking biryani. So uh, it's not just rice. So you also put meat into it. You also put a lot of spices into it. So it's like, it's also like, you know, fast food. So uh, some element of s s sweetness, some element of spice, you know, something hot, something salty, something sour, everything should be there. So when we write, when we package a long form, we consider all these things, all emotions, mm -hmm. something to excite a reader, something to surprise a leader, mm -hmm. reader, mm -hmm. something, you know, uh, some elements of uh, tension, mm -hmm. the typical classical storytelling uh, mm -hmm. elements. So we package, we mm -hmm. put all those things together and uh, uh, we make sure that the reader goes through the entire 7,000 words. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, classic storytelling technique, like right. uh, uh, one of the best examples will be, uh, you know, uh, Shahrazada sitting yeah. and telling stories to Shahriyar, the king, the Arabian Nights, Alif Laila Walayla. So uh, uh, she knew how to, you know, engage uh, her listener mm. uh, because uh, her stories were like, you know, insurance policies. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if the story fails, she would yeah. die. Yeah. So, that the, the same thing. Every, every storyteller knows this, that right. if the story fails, I would die. Yeah. So, you are a, you are a Shahrazada mm -hmm. when you tell a story. Before, because if your audience leaves you, then if your reader mm -hmm. uh, leaves you, then your career could end. Right. Yeah. So, um, coming to our final question, um, we've spoken a lot, I think, theoretically about lo a lot of um, different ways of writing, skills so far. What kind of um, projects have you been working with that have, you know, sort of, 
or that are really exciting you and um, also what next for you what as a writer the major project i did uh, recently was about kail patnam yeah. kail patnam is a tamil muslim town on the coromandel coast yeah. and it's a town with a very long history very rich yeah. tradition of you know indo arab yeah, yeah. uh, culture so the first settlement according to the oral tradition of the people of kail patnam uh, happened uh, you know even before the prophet muhammad and uh, islam reached during the time of prophet muhammad itself uh, just like it reached malabar it also reached mabar the other side of the coast so i was there and i was uh, writing a long form uh, actually it, it came in a website called the site.in which is based in qatar so they serialized it they published it in six uh, different articles uh, and it was a very refreshing experience i did this one year before i think uh, i'm still working on it so i want to make this into a book and uh, oh, when i was in dubai i met the people of kail patnam they had a gathering over there so i was interviewing them so i'm still working on it and when it comes to the documentary part i'm uh, almost finishing a project on the masjids of malabar yeah so it's basically uh, a long journey all across kerala uh, through the first generation masjids first and then uh, the later uh masjids and uh, it's not just about the traditional architecture it's mm-hmm. also about masjid as an idea yeah. uh in the sense that uh the qalis who used to you know be judges mm-hmm. were not just muslims even non muslims came mm-hmm. to the mosque and presented their disputes and the legal system that's the idea the sense of justice that they had the trust they received and when it comes to the colonial invasion then this the same qalis used to you know issue fatwas to fight against the british and first against the portuguese and then against yeah. you know every european yeah. colonizer then uh, there used to be the dars system wherein the uh, dini talimat yeah. or the religious education used to give not just religious education by the way even uh, things like astronomy uh geometry mathematics uh, language uh, all those things uh, they used to teach so basically uh, masjid not uh, as a structure but as an idea or as an institution as a social institution so we have completed the shooting and we are now doing the post production basically everything is done now the color grading is yeah. going on yeah inshallah so we are looking forward to um your future projects and hopefully we can engage with them and um so i'm really glad that we had this conversation today i think a lot of ideas uh, sort of floating through my mind as we we were discussing um a lot of connections for example when you said about like the space of writing i was thinking of virginia wolf you know room of one's own and for women particularly the idea of how um you know what is one space to write and um and i think um even uh, a lot of the uh, conversations around bringing new ideas and sort of challenging oneself when it comes to writing is something that uh, we as uh, whether it is we as writers or as editors all of us have to sort of reflect upon all of this so thank you so much uh, thank yeah. you